Hi, welcome to the second uh, tutorial about how to set up a virtual cluster on uh, VirtualBox. So, in this one, I'm just going to SSH into the head node uh, using PuTTY. It's just easy, easier to work that way. So, I'm just going to type in my IP address that we got from the IS config in the previous tutorial. So, this is just going to ask for username and a password. I'm just going to increase the font size a bit so it's easier for you guys to read what I'm doing. That should be good. Okay. Now we can do an IF config again, so just there's the IP I just used to log in. Now the first thing we're gonna do in this one is disable Cell Linux. Now it's a security thing for Linux and while setting up a cluster it's best to disable it because it allows you it gives you a bit more freedom so the first thing we're going to do is echo zero into slash selinux enforce now that disables it as long as the machine is on as soon as you set reset the machine it will re-enable selinux so to make this a bit more permanent we vi etc. Yeah, this config so Linux, and then we change enforcing to disabled. Right, quit. So this will uh, disable so Linux when the machine boots from now on. The next thing we're going to do is install a few services that we'll be we will be using. So yum min yes install vim i just prefer vim v over vi dhcp wget open ssh all of the open ssh packets nfs utils all of the bind packages ntp all of the gcc packages all of the fortran packages make glibc lib g fortran sudo and normally i install bridge utils as well but it's not necessary for this one so just install that uh, something is giving me a yum lock I'm just going to reboot this machine then. And but is going to complain. Okay, now I can restart the session for this machine for this party connection and uh, just log in again. Any moment now. Okay, so let's just yum install again. Now this is gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna pause the video, pause the recording until this is done. After forever and a while, that yum finally finished. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is set up the named service well the DNS service um, so let's go edit the named config file um, first thing we're gonna do is comment out these first two lines normally it would be better to add the IP address for um, the network interface on which it's supposed to listen but for this for the sake of speed um, and the length of these tutorials, I'm just going to leave that, comment that out. Allow query should be from the network which is allowed to query this DNS service, which will be our private network. So 11.0.0.0 slash 24. 
the rest of this is still fine. Now, normally you you would use a pre-generated RNDC key that is stored in a file that is not plain text, but I'm just gonna add a normal RNDC, well, a text-based RNDC key here using HMAC MD5 algorithm, and that's the secret key. Now, this key will be used to update the DNS service from uh, other applications like DHCP, which we will be using. So once that's done, you only need to add the zone files to be done with this uh, this configuration file. So I will add the zone testcluster.com in and now the zone configuration. Oh. Always a semicolon after everything you do. So the type will be master semicolon. File is in etc named test cluster dot com dot zone semicolon allow update so we need to specify how the DNS records will be updated and or from which using which keys they will be updated and it will be using RNDC key. So that's the forward lookup zone. If someone searches the domain name, they will get the IP from that zone. If someone looks for the IP, they will get the domain name from this zone. Never use numpad in putty. 11.in address.arpa in the zone semicolon. So type is master, file is slash etc slash named slash rev point zero point zero point eleven dot in address dot arpa. Now these names, you can use whatever you want. I just generally use something like this so I can distinguish between the different zone files if there are if there are more than one key or in the C key oh, missed the semicolon there that looks fine just gonna check up here add a semicolon behind that as well okay so that's it for that file now let's make the first zone file it's at vim etc named named test cluster dot com dot dot zone wow i can't type today okay this file will be empty at first So let's add this actual zone data to this one. First is insert the DTL for one day. Stupid numpad. 86400 semicolon. Now we add the zone at in SOA master dot test cluster dot com dot root dot test cluster dot com dot and bracket and bracket now i'm just going to copy this in these are just the codes and times for serial for uh, sorry certain things in the named configuration in the in the specific zone now the first record will obviously be our uh, it master node master dot test cluster com dot and then the actual entry master in a eleven point zero point zero point one that's it for this zone file, so you can 
exit and save and then the reverse zone will be like that okay so this pretty much the same start for this one DTL eight six four zero zero at in SOA master dot test cluster dot com dot and root dot test cluster dot com dot copy in the same values you'll see this one serial is a bit different than the previous one um, the serial gets updated every time something in the zone file changes or well every time a zone file is updated it when setting it up you should probably set it to zero and every time you make a manual change to the to the file you should increment it by one but it doesn't really matter right right now so then we add the first entry in ns master dot this cluster dot com dot the dots at the end of the lines are very important as well as the dots up here master in a 11.0.0.1 and then one in ptr master dot test cluster dot com so that's it for this zone file now we can start the service and we get a problem okay file not found so apparently I made a typo somewhere dot in address dot arpa file from master file rev dot zero dot zero dot one one dot in dash addr dot o arpa and arpa no it's fine i'm just going to copy that oh there's the problem so it's in my named config file where i only used name here instead of name d so now we can just restart the service and it's running wonderful okay in the next one i will cover installing the hcp and binding it to the dns service thank you